A long time ago, I was in a band with another guitarist, and I had to say he was not an easy person to play music with. He would get all in his head, he didn't listen well, and he would get super frazzled when things didn't go perfectly. You know, this former bandmate of mine could have learned a lot from Rick and Peter, the dynamic guitar duo in the band Goose, and so can the rest of us, so let's get right into it. Goose is known for their innovative use of effects, so let's hear Rick talk about why effects are so integral to his playing. When you kind of like run into walls, which happens all the time, anything to like shift your perspective is good so sometimes sometimes a you know a little effect or a, a shift in tone can do that here's rick applying what he was talking about Right there in that example, there's so much going on, not only that awesome use of a delay, but then also there's something else Goose is well known for, integrating these simple and catchy hooks into their playing. And this particular example, the little hook Rick came up with is really only one note, but the rhythm is what makes it so catchy. And then he breaks away from it with this kind of like loose angular playing for contrast, but quickly returns to the one note hook, but this time up an octave, and with kind of a slightly different rhythm which helps move the idea forward. So, you know, back to effects again. This time, Peter has some insight to share about effects as tools for musical expression. Rick is like building to like a peak and a solo. If I'm back, like while he's doing more tension stuff, back on the wall and then kind of like lean forward. Gotta love that wah, and I really appreciate the way Peter uses it in a less usual way to support Rick's solos. And now to get back to the hook, sometimes it's actually what makes the song. Like in the tune Moby, the hook is actually the main part of the song, otherwise it's just a loose improvisation. He states it simply and then improvises, and each time he comes back to it, he continues to develop it and play it differently each time. So here's an example of what it looks like, and I'm just gonna play it quickly three times each changing it up in a style that would be something like what Rick would do. adaptability to his sound more broadly with his respect to his tones and use of effects. I like the idea of, of how it's always different, you know, all the micro like movements of all the knobs, um, you know, I, as opposed to like the a philosophy of like, this is where I, where I have it at all yeah, times. Yeah. I'm kind of like, if turn it on and if it works, it's like, if it sounds good, then cool. But if it doesn't sound good, then I'll move it. So this isn't Rick's signature this setting. This is not the signature setting. This is like where, <laughs> this is where we're at today. And like, yeah, I don't. I like that. Okay. I, I, I don't want you know. I, I don't. <laughs> well, dude, it's funny because we'll come to these rig rundowns, and sometimes people will have their dials, knobs, like marked. microly. Yeah, yeah, marked. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that last part it really resonates with me because I'm one of those people whose pedals are always the same. I'm usually not out touring, so playing at home, it's easy to keep the settings the same. Except I do live with the constant threat of my toddler doing his own experimentation with the dials and changing things up if he gets his little hands There's on There's so much more we can take away from this group, their creativity, that they are willing to take chances and evolve their sound. But for me, the most impressive thing is that they make the best of things. Finding things to um, sort of like take you out of your head 
while you're improvising because yeah. like, you know when you the more you're in your head the more you're kind of going to run up in, into walls when improvising i think um and just get stuck in like the, the same like, little like box and like licks that you gravitate towards and the whole idea with improvising is to break out of that you yeah. know is to break is to go places that you play you know come up with ideas that you never have never had before or like you know don't normally gravitate towards it's the intent behind it um, and you know the percentage of the amount of, of time that that actually happens is small, but it's worth it. And one last thing, I don't want you to go away thinking that they're always loosey goosey and only improvising hooks on the fly during their jams. Listen to this clip where they end their jam in this great way with a predetermined hook that both breaks the tension they created as they improvise and creates new tension as it's repeated over and over. blazing down the trail that other great jam bands have traveled before them. So check out this video here and find out what any guitarist can learn from Trey Anastasio from Fish. He was so impressed with the young whippersnappers and Goose that he took them on tour as his opening act with his own band.